Hi, today we're going to go over the quotient rule in derivatives and we're going to prove that if f and g are differentiable then the derivative as follows of f divided by g the quotient will give me the following which is in short the derivative of f over g will be g squared in the denominator on the top I have g times f prime minus f times g prime let's get started what is the quotient rule if f and g are differentiable then now remember later on we're going to be using the g function and use the fact that it is differentiable differentiable means continuous and that is a theorem i will be listed in just a minute so the derivative of f over g with respect to x that's d dx will give me g of x square in the denominator we replace we place g of x on top times the derivative of f of x minus f of x multiplied by the derivative of g of x kind of lengthy to read but we have the short form that the derivative of f over g would be g squared down g times f prime minus f times g prime the theorem that i just mentioned earlier is the following if f is differentiable at a then f is continuous at a and we were given that f and g are differentiable and we're trying to prove the formula for the quotient the derivative of f divided by g now differentiable means or implies continuous but continuous does not imply differentiable so differentiable is stronger than continuous differentiable it is continuous and it is smooth so what differentiable means means continuous and smooth so this is continuous but it's not differentiable because it has an edge on it so in short differentiable means smooth curve continuously smooth just like smooth criminal michael jackson so think about differentiable as smooth curve or smoothly connected okay let's move on so we just mentioned that theorem is important and we need to show the derivative of the quotient to show the derivative of the quotient as it was stated we need to use the limit definition of the derivative that's f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h now this is a lengthy proof and that's one reason why i type everything and i go over it as a lecture notes instead of writing everything on the whiteboard and call it teaching because if i do this on the whiteboard and record it's going to take a way longer than what you could see here in this video so here we go we start with f of x as capital f of x equals the quotient f of x divided by g of x using the limit definition of the derivative we have f prime capital f prime at x will be the limit definition but capital f could be rephrased this way both sides on the left side we're going to use the input x plus h that's what we have so we're just applying it straightforward knowing that capital f of x is a quotient or a rational function now we need to combine these two fractions and the common denominator between the denominator g of x and the denominator g of x plus h will be both multiplied together so we're going to multiply the left side by 
g of x and we'll multiply the right hand side the right hand uh, fraction by g of x plus h this way we both have the same denominator or they both have the same denominator and we could combine them as you could see now if you divide by h that's the same thing as multiply by 1 over h in other words we need to bring this down here instead of keeping it down all the way uh, will be easier to look at it as one big fraction instead of a fraction on top of another fraction okay so that's simplifying having the h goes up not sitting by itself down by changing the main division to a multiplication of the reciprocal of h which is 1 over h now this is a main step that we have which is adding and subtracting f of x g of x so we're adding f of x g of x and we are subtracting f of x g of x now notice that if i group them if i group this together and i group this together there is something going on here the left two terms they do have g of x the right two terms they both have f of x let me change the colors so you can see it now the left hand side or the left two terms are in red and the right hand side the two terms are in darker color as you could see factoring from the left two terms g of x out and from the right two terms f of x out i will have the following now i'm just coloring them to show the concept let's factor them out here we go now g of x is being factored out and f of x is being factored out next another concept that we have since the formula is having f of x plus h minus f of x over h not g of x minus g of x plus h we need this to be switched like that to switch it i need to take a minus out as you could see right here this minus was not there as you could see by factoring a minus one out we could switch these two and have it the way we want it in the limit definition of the derivative that's another concept that we're using next we're going to divide the top side and the bottom side by h we're going to divide everything here by h and down here by h as you could see it shows everywhere we're trying to get something like derivatives that looks like this that's the idea now on the bottom side this h cancels as you could see so here we go there is no more edge it cancels we will take the limit and apply it to the top and apply it to the denominator under the top i have a product and i have a difference and i have another product we're going to go in for each term on the top and the bottom side And that's what I meant. As you can see, the limit as h approaches zero is shown up here and here and here after the minus and here for the second product, as you could see the product, and down 
as a product for both uh, factors. And the reason why I'm coloring this is because of the theorem that we just mentioned early. A function uh, or f and g are differentiable given to me, but any function that is differentiable, that is also continuous. And because g is differentiable, so g is continuous, which means we're thinking about what happens to this right here. We just mentioned that g is continuous, and that says that limit of g plus a or plus h as h approaches 0 will be just g of x. Since g of x is continuous because it was given to me as differentiable, then the limit of g of x plus h as h approaches 0 will be just g of x. So this right here is actually g of x. And limit of g of x as h approaches 0 or anything else, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be also g of x. So I do have a g of x here, another g of x here, which is g square x. And you know what is going on on the top. That will be g of x. That will be f of x. It's not going to go anywhere. That is the derivative of g, just the limit definition of derivatives, and that will be f prime, or the derivative of f of x. And that is the answer right here. So let's summarize in a minute or so. If we are given a function that is written as a ratio of two functions and we want the derivative that's f prime f prime is going to end up the following so for a rational function as f over g the derivative is down below we say g to the second g times f prime minus f times g prime and we used some major ideas as we simplify one major idea is right here adding and subtracting the product of f and g second part is switching the minus right here to make it instead of g minus g of x plus h g of x plus h minus g of x by taking a minus one out and finally we use the concept given to me that g is differentiable which means g is continuous which means the limit of g of x plus h as h approaches zero is g of x and that should do it if you have a rational function like f over g f prime is as follows and that should do it Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.